Hey there, just recently released the brush stroke tools that we've been developing alongside the Project Gold Showcase, giving it its unique oil painterly style. It's a free add-on that you can get on the Blender Extensions platform on extensions.blender.org or download directly from within Blender itself if you have Blender 4.2 and up. I also made a full workshop going over how I created this little demo scene, giving you a detailed breakdown of all you need to know to make full use of its potential. You can find that workshop and the demo scene on our platform on studio.blender.org, so I highly recommend you to check that out. But in this video, I'm just going to quickly go over all of the basics you need to know to get you started using the brush stroke tools to create your own painterly scenes. So as I open up this demo file, you can see that the brush stroke style already works without the add-on actually being installed. The brush stroke tools will always make sure that the data that is necessary for the style to work is included in your blend file. So when you use the Brushstroke Tools add-on for your scene and you want to share the file with somebody else, it will just work without them having the add-on installed. But of course, to make changes, the best experience you will get is using the add-on. Installing the Brushstroke Tools extension is really as simple as just making sure that you're using Blender 4.2 or higher and then going to the Get Extensions tab in the User Preferences and search for Brushstroke Tools. There, you can just press the Install button it will download and install the add-on and you can get started using it right away. So let's take a look at the different elements that we can see there. You will always be able to find the user interface for the brush stroke tools add-on in the properties panel on the right of the 3D viewport, which you can open by pressing the N key. And then it presents you with a bunch of different settings. In this case, we already have a user interface for existing brush strokes that we can navigate. Depending on what object I have selected in the 3D viewport, I get a list of all of the corresponding brush stroke layers to the object I selected. If I select this wall here, for example, you can see that there's a stone surface layer, a spots layer, and a moss layer. And within this list, I can select them individually as well. The surface object that is associated with these individual brush stroke layers is shown at the top of the panel with the surface icon. In this case, it's the wall stones object. So every brush strokes layer always has a surface that it is attached to. But let's zoom out for a second. At the very top right of the panel, we have two buttons with the screen icon. We can use these to disable and enable all of the brush stroke layers in the entire scene. So let's take a look at this file without any brush strokes. As you can see, there's a big difference. So most of what we've been looking at was actually brush stroke layers that have been created using this add-on. We can get them back by pressing the enable icon. At this point, I should also mention that for a brush stroke heavy scene like this, the add-on is quite computationally intensive. So unfortunately, it does require a certain level of hardware to be able to run it smoothly. But for simple cases, you should be able to make it work with your hardware as well, even if it's not that powerful. But for now, I'm going to just put that out as a disclaimer and assume that your hardware is powerful enough to handle this kind of use case. So now that you've seen how much of the scene is actually made up of brush strokes, let's try to navigate it a bit better. As I already mentioned, brush strokes are always attached to a surface. And you can see the list of the corresponding ones right here in the user interface. You also get control over the visibility settings and even their names using this user interface. Since these brush strokes are very likely to cover your entire scene, it becomes a bit more difficult to actually select the underlying surface object in the 3D viewport. For this reason, there's a small surface button right here that will select the surface object of the brush strokes that you have selected right now. If you want to move your object, for example, you shouldn't do that to the brush strokes themselves, but to the surface object, which they are parented to. Next to that, there's a big edit button to edit the current brush stroke layer and a toggle to automatically jump into edit mode whenever you select one. This just makes your drawing workflow simpler, but by default it's turned off. And then up here you have some additional settings, for example to duplicate a brush stroke layer or to delete it. Some additional operators are in this drop down menu here. I skipped over it so far, but how do we actually create a new brush stroke layer in the first place? Let me use this cube object as an example. When there are no brush strokes associated to an object yet, this whole panel here is empty, and instead you are just presented with these two buttons. As you can see, the surface object we have selected right now is the cube, 
and then we can either choose to add a fill or a draw brushstroke layer. Fill will scatter a bunch of brush strokes over the surface that you have selected. And as you can see, it automatically creates the brush stroke layer with a name that is based on the base object that we used and brush strokes. Creating a new layer also automatically puts us into edit mode. When I now press the draw button, it will instead create a new draw brush stroke layer. These two different types are fundamentally different. And the draw layer on its own doesn't add any brush strokes yet until we actually start drawing on top of the cube. For drawing, the add-on comes with its own custom brush stroke draw tool that gives you the ability to choose a color for each curve that you draw in that is taken up by the brush stroke automatically. And similarly to the drawing of the actual draw brush strokes layer, you can also control the fill layer by pressing the edit flow button and then drawing in a flow direction. Now, since I did this on a cube, there is not a lot of surface resolution to work with. So let's quickly select the surface object, go into edit mode and give this cube a bit more resolution. Since the whole setup is procedural, you can go in and do that at any point in time. And now if I go back clicking on edit flow, you can see that we have pretty precise control over control over navigating the flow of the brush strokes on the cube. This way we can fill in the surface with a lot of precise control a lot more quickly than having to draw everything manually. For the new layers that you're creating, there are also some advanced settings. I'm not going to go over those in detail now. Usually you should be fine keeping them as they are, or you can look at the documentation. So let's get rid of the cube and take a look at the existing brushstroke layers instead to look at the remaining parts of the user interface. When you have a brushstroke layer selected, below you see three different tabs of settings for this brushstroke layer. The shape tab represents the modifiers that are on your brushstroke object. You can find the same ones in the actual properties panel as well, but here they are presented in a more convenient and simplified way. This brushstroke layer here has two geometry nodes modifiers with a bunch of different settings that are organized in panels. I won't go over all the individual ones, but usually they should be pretty intuitive to understand and all have descriptions for you to read up on what they do. And you can always just play around and see what happens when you change the parameters. By default, this presents you a simplified view with only the more important settings. But to get a full overview of this modifier's capabilities, you can toggle the UI option setting at the top right here. This will show you that there's actually more to this modifier stack than we've just seen. On the right, you can pin and unpin modifiers, panels, and individual settings to remove them from the user interface. By default, there are actually a bunch of panels that are not shown when you add a new brushstroke layer. For example, there is a more advanced stroke culling panel that can be used to remove brushstrokes outside of the camera view, and you can just press this pin button to show the panel and its individual settings inside. Now to get rid of this extra information again, you can just press this toggle and now only the pinned panels and properties are shown in this interface. Next to the shape tab to change the modifier settings, there is the material tab. In the material panel, you have control over all the different settings that make up the material of the brush strokes. At the top, you can see the material that is used by the brush stroke layer. Multiple brushstroke layers can share the same material, so make sure to keep an overview of that. All the settings below are regarding the material that is selected here. At the top, you can select the color of the material. By default, this is set to use the brushstroke color, which is given either by you drawing them in or from the color panel in the shape tab. But instead to make it easier, you can also disable this checkbox and then choose the color directly in here. To make the brush strokes look a bit more natural, you can add some variation to the color for each individual stroke to make it less uniform. Then you can control other PBR parameters for the opacity of the brush strokes, metalness, roughness, etc. You can use these to represent different materials with your brush strokes. Besides all of these fundamental material properties, you have also the brush style and the effects tab. Let's look at the brush style. First up, you get a preview of the texture that is used for the brush strokes right now. 
and here you can select different textures. Right now, there are no results found because we just enabled the add-on. When I press this button to refresh, you can see that there is a list of pre-installed texture sets. Let's choose a different one. You can see how the preview changes and also the look in the 3D viewport. Here are some basic settings to control how exactly the texture looks. Besides these scans of hand-painted brush strokes, there's also a default texture. This one is a procedurally generated brush stroke mask. And because of that, you get a bunch more parameters. But at the same time, it looks less realistic as well. Let's go back to the one we had in the beginning. This curve here gives you some basic control over the opacity and how it is applied to the texture of the brush stroke. By using a combination of different brush stroke layers with different textures, you can create all sorts of styles and communicate different structures in the material. The effects also help with that. On this layer, there's already the fade effect turned on, which makes everything look a bit more soft. If I turn that off, you can see how the outsides of the brush stroke are a bit more harsh. All these effects that can be toggled for a material can be used for different kinds of looks and have their own settings. A canvas, for example, can be used to help communicate a fabric material. They can also be stacked on top of each other. This third tab lets you control additional settings over the brush stroke layer. For example, here you can toggle on additional more advanced functionality like drawing on a deforming surface like a character in a shot or animating the brush strokes over time. I've briefly already shown it before, but let me quickly show you the draw operation again. The moss on these rocks, for example, here is made from a draw layer. When I click the edit brush strokes button, that puts us into edit mode and selects the brush strokes draw operator. So here we can control a bunch of different settings, like for example, using the pressure of the stylus for the radius, as well as the color that we want to draw with. Here you can see the moss is made up of all these curves under the hood. And we can easily draw in another one right here. And then these fuzzy brush strokes pop up in the color that we chose. Just like a fill layer, the draw layer also has shape properties. So here on top of the curve that we've drawn in, there are a bunch of procedurally generated duplicates of the stroke that are spread out over the surface and have a noise applied to them to make it more fuzzy. And that way we get this look of the fuzzy moss that makes it very easy to quickly sketch in where the moss should appear. When clicking the edit button on a fill layer, you get to draw in the flow like I've also shown you before. But another way of setting the flow is doing it directly in the surface object itself. On this rock here, for example, if I select the surface and go into edit mode, I can select these edges and then mark them to define the flow of the brush strokes. This add-on comes with a pie menu on Control alt f that gives you the operators to mark parts of the geometry directly so that the brush strokes can use it. For example, we can mark these edges as flow. And now you can see that the brush strokes are all following this exact direction. One important thing to mention about the use of this add-on as a prerequisite is that your meshes that you're applying the brush strokes to need to be UV unwrapped. There really isn't much of a high requirement for these UVs though. They only need to exist and be somewhat reasonable. In most of the cases, it will be enough to do an auto unwrap. But this also means that you cannot simply just expect to be able to use these brush stroke tools on generated geometry with constructive modifiers. For example, the mesh coming out of a skin modifier or a solidifier modifier does not automatically have usable UVs. So usually just apply these modifiers and do a simple automatic UV unwrap before you get started with the brush strokes. In the case of this example scene, the rendering is all done in real time with Eevee, but the brush strokes also render with Cycles just fine. So let me just switch the render engine to Cycles. And first of all, we see an issue of a lot of black rendering pixels. The reason for that is that the default settings of Cycles are not really set out for this kind of rendering technique. But this is easy to fix. In the brush stroke tools add-on, you can just go to the advanced panel, press the render setup button and OK. And then when you select an object, it will jump into the new setup and you will immediately see how everything resolves much nicer now. 
So there you go, you can render the same scene with either Cycles or Eevee, and it will look very similar. The last thing I quickly want to go over are the add-on's user preferences. Now, usually you probably won't have to adjust these, but I still want to mention them. By default, all of the assets used by the Brushstrokes add-on are appended into your file, and the textures are packed so that you don't rely on any outside resources. If you want to, you can instead link all of the data from the resource directory. That resource directory is the add-on directory, so if you're working on a production, I would recommend you to choose another custom path that you can relatively link to from your project file. After selecting the path, you need to actually copy all of the resources into the target directory. You can use this operator to do so. Make sure to get this set up right before you start using the Brushstrokes add-on for your specific project. After changing the directory, you should also press this button to reload all of the brush styles from the right resource. All right, and that should cover all of the basics. But as I said in the beginning, I also have a full workshop on our platform on studio.blender.org that you can check out to find out how to create this painterly scene, building all the brushstroke layers from start to finish, and find out all sorts of tips and tricks along the way. You can find this demo scene also following the link to the workshop. So I hope I'll see you there, and I'm really excited to see what people create using these tools. Bye.